Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hopper City channel. I'm glad to have you back here again with me. Um, yesterday I had a nice thought about making a new video for the Hardware City channel. And you know, when I have no special ideas ongoing in my mind, I, well, I just like to take a piece of paper and a pencil and um, um, try to dig on some more interesting um, applications for the NE555. You know, this is one topic I always take out frequently um, because this small circuit, uh, despite the fact that it is pretty old and uh, in the structure pretty simple, is so versatile that I uh, I make a challenge out of it for, for myself to always find some new application that uh, no one ever uh, did before. And I think I found a nice idea and I want to show you it now. So maybe you know that there's a variant existing of the NE555 named the NE556. It's this little uh, cute little device and uh, this circuit contains two ordinary NE555 in one package. So if you have an application where you have to do um, your solution with two NE555 instead of one, uh, it's easier when, when you take this circuit here because it already contains two NE555 and you have a smaller package. Um, this is a benefit. <laughs> okay, um, the original idea I had yesterday was a question. I, I asked myself how fast can this little device switch uh, on and off, or in other terms, um, can self-oscillate. What is the maximum frequency I can squeeze out of this little circuit uh, to use it as an oscillator? You know there's a R-stable operation specified in the data sheets of the NE555. You can use it in monostable mode or in, in R-stable mode. And uh, the R-stable mode, in fact, is nothing more than an RC oscillator with square wave output. Um, and I wanted to see how can I drive it to the edge. And the reason is that I wanted to make um, some kind of um, let's say a small beacon transmitter in a frequency band uh, where this little device or, um, can can can, uh, can operate a frequency it can achieve. And then I wanted to receive this signal with an ordinary shortwave transmitter um, in SSB mode. So that means um, I wanted to configure this little device in a mode that it uh, generates a carrier wave of the maximum frequency it can, can achieve. And the second NE555 in this little circuit here should be used to switch the first one on and off. So you get a pulsating, uh, a pulsing signal, like a beacon or a homing signal, and uh, I want to receive the signal in SSB mode with this um, uh, favorable Sony uh, shortwave receiver I already own for some years. Okay, and now I'll tell you how I did it. So let me tell you briefly again how the NE555 works. It's really simple. This is the whole circuit in a diagram. Um, you have a trigger input here. And when the voltage on this trigger end for, uh, on pit falls below one third of the supply voltage VCC, then this gate here is triggering this um, memory register. And the memory register goes high, and the first thing it does that it releases this discharge transistor. This discharge transistor normally is active because you have an averted output here, as you can see. So this point here, the collector, is, uh, let's say, switched to ground. This is uh, for discharging the capacitor you use on the NE555. So when this uh, device triggers, this um, transistor is released and, and this electric potential here goes high Z, high impedance. That means you have no electric potential here. Um, the second thing is that uh, the output buffer here is generating uh, a high level output in the range of the uh, supply voltage uh, you are using. And um, then you have a third input here, the threshold input. And the threshold input is also connected to uh, the capacitor, which is used on the NE555. And when the capacitor voltage reaches, reaches two-thirds of the supply voltage, then this gate triggers here and resets this memory register. And the ditch discharge transistor is switched on 
and discharges the capacitor and the output goes to low again. So now what was my idea? Let me explain. I used um, a small resistor network connected to VCC, two resistors, a 20K and a 2K7 and this part, oh, oh, this, um, this wire here from the network goes to the discharge connector and this one here goes to the trigger input. So that means in the moment you switch on the NE505 I told you that this uh, transistor is, um, is switched so that means that this point here has a, a ground potential so you can see it uh, in another way as if this point here would be grounded and then we have a low um, voltage here which is below one third of the supply voltage and then this uh, gate triggers here the memory register and the second thing I did I connected this output here to the threshold so it means in the moment um, the, uh, the register here is triggered and the output buffer goes high the higher voltage goes to the threshold input and because the voltage here is higher than two-thirds of the uh, supply voltages it immediately resets this whole circuit and the whole thing uh, starts up again so that means that the NE505 is switched on and off as fast as possible in this configuration because we have no additional um, capacitors here which would slow down the switching process. It's just oscillating in its own manner. Okay, and here you can see my prototyping circuit. This is the NE556. The first NE555 inside this package is on the left side, always preceded with the number one of all the signals. And the second NE555 is here on the right side, preceded with the number two on the signals. Here is the resistor network, I already explained to you. Um, this tab here goes to the, um, to the discharge input. No, oh, sorry. Um, let's start with this side here. This is the resistor network I showed you. And this point here goes to the trigger input of the second NE555. And this here goes to the discharge input. So in a moment of switching on the device, um, it is immediately triggered and you can see here that the output is rerouted to the threshold input. So this is what I showed you here in this configuration. Now, um, on the left side, uh, you can see that the um, second NE505 is just wired as a simple R-stable mode. That means it generates um, impulses, um, PVM mode of, of um, of equal length between pause and, and, and pulse. Uh, so it's a symmetrical output and it's just uh, configured in a very simple way as described in the um, data sheets of the NE505 or NE506. And the output here of um, this internal NE505 goes over here to the reset input of the second any 555 and so it enables and disables this in a rhythm of its own simple sequences it, it generates and that's the whole track so this is my circuit as you can see this is the any 556 and these are all those components I showed you in uh, the schematic okay and I switched on the power supply of 9 volts and let's look how the uh, output of the second NE505 that means um, on this point here where we can root out the high frequency um, out of the device how it looks so you can see all those impulses more or less symmetrically uh, pulse pulse <coughs> um, PVM mode of uh, about 50% and now we take a deeper look into the impulses uh, generated of the second NE505 and you can see something like this so um, the NE505 goes on and after some uh, you can see we are in a range here of 800 nanoseconds so about let's say a few microseconds 
the uh, output is high and then it goes down and um, when it goes down you see there's a very small um, um, amount of time just passing by until it gets re-triggered again so it's mostly uh, the output is mostly in a high level um, has mostly high level potential and only for a little time uh, low level potential that's enough to um, emit some radio energy <clears throat> okay so and now let's hear how it sounds so now we switch on the Sony receiver and we have a frequency of 288 um, kilohertz and now I'll switch on the transmitter and you can hear the signal it doesn't bridge very much distance now we have a distance of about one meter when we go away well, let's take the camera a bit you can observe that um, the signal becomes um, lower very fast well this is due to the fact that uh, we don't have an antenna connected to the oscillator and so there is more or less just a near field um, generated by um, the oscillator and it's not really um, distributed um, through space because you need a antenna in fact for a frequency of 288 kilohertz you need a very long antenna to effectively uh, distribute the energy generated by the oscillator and we don't have this here so but um, there's a very interesting application for this um, for this thing here because you know um, it's a way that you can, for example, mark a room for someone. Um, um, let's say in some kind of game you play, yet you want to guide someone to uh, to a maze or through a room, and you want to find a special place where you, uh, where, you where you hide something that he, he should find, or you mark a room for for someone else for a special reason. And in this case, it really is a benefit that the distance that this transmitter can bridge is, is very low. So it's easy that you can, uh, by going around with this receiver here and, and, um, and observing if the signal becomes louder or, or lower, um, it's easy for you to find the place where this uh, little device is hidden. So when I get nearer, it gets louder. I go away from it, the signal becomes lower. Well, there's one important uh, thing to say about uh, what I showed you here. Principally using uh, an oscillator um, in a frequency range that is not provided uh, for your use by the regulation authorities uh, is prohibited. It's something that drives the authorities up the walls. Um, and especially when you connect an antenna to it. And, and this is a very crucial point because this is the, um, let's say, this is the, the gap between the um, more or less legal test application or a, a illegal application. When you are building up an oscillator for some testing purposes, it's okay as long as you don't connect an antenna to it to distribute the energy that it generates through space. Uh, because if you do so, then and then you make visible your intention to use it really as a transmitter um, to put energy in the air and then you are not uh, not anymore in the, the mode of testing something so um, you must know when you connect an antenna to this device you can surely improve the distance it can bridge but this is illegal I just want to tell you, tell you that uh, because this is my disclaimer from anyone you want to do with this device. This is, this is your responsibility and not mine. Okay, uh, that's all for now. I hope you have some fun uh, and you find maybe some um, useful application for this kind of beacon or homing transmitter and maybe it triggers also um, your imagination what else could be done with the NE555. Um, because this device is so versatile that maybe you get some ideas on your own 
um, how you can do what never, uh, what no one ever uh, did before with this device, and this would be a great idea. So thank you and bye for now.